The principles behind Newton's laws of motion are very significant in understanding the motion of objects in our universe. Their applications are all around us. Understanding these laws therefore helps us understand why the things around us move or behave the way they do. After going through this lesson, you are expected to infer that when a body exerts a force on another, an equal amount of force is exerted back on it. What is common in the situations above? A. A man rowing a boat. B. A flying airplane. C. A boy pulling his pet dog. D. A man riding a bike. The figures show situations that involve application of forces. Look around you. What do you observe? How would you describe most of the objects that you see? What can you say about moving vehicles and running animals? Have you ever asked yourself what causes these things to move? How will the world be without motion? You have learned in the previous lesson that net force enables objects to change its state of motion. If an object is at rest, moving it requires force. For an object already moving, changing its velocity either in magnitude or in direction also requires a force. Do you know who are the scientists and great men behind the concept of force? Motion has been studied for centuries by many great minds. Aristotle, 284 to 322 BC, for example, believed that a moving object needs a continuous application of force to keep it moving. To him, an object is naturally at rest. He believed that the greater the force on the object, the greater is its speed. He introduced the idea of impetus that keeps a body in motion. Aristotle formulated the idea that, for an object to move, a force must be exerted on it, but when this force is removed, the object comes to rest. Jean Buridan, 1300-1358, also saw impetus as the cause of movement. He further developed the theory of impetus introduced by Philoponus. According to him, motion is possible through a mover that keeps the object moving with power proportional to the speed and mass of the object. When the mover is removed, the object stops moving. He later named impetus as force. John Philoponus, 550 AD, conceptualized the idea of surrounding force similar to inertia found in Galileo's idea and Newton's first law of motion. He first introduced theory of impetus, a concept similar to force. According to the theory, when impetus decreases, the speed of the object also decreases. When that impetus is removed, the object stops moving. Galileo Galilei, 1564 to 1642, on the other hand, disagreed to Aristotle. He claimed that even without a continuous application of force, an object can continue to move with constant speed in a straight line provided there are no outside forces acting on it. Finally, Sir Isaac Newton, 1643-1727, used Galileo's ideas and eventually formulated the three laws of motion. The principles behind Newton's laws of motion are very significant in understanding the motion of objects in our universe. Their applications are all around us. Understanding these laws therefore helps us understand why the things around us move or behave the way they do. You learn that if the forces acting on an object at rest are balanced or if their algebraic sum equate to zero, the object stays at rest. This illustrates Newton's first law of motion, a principle that was primarily based on the works of Galileo. Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia, states that an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion will continue to move at constant velocity unless acted upon by a net force. The tendency of an object to maintain its state of rest or of uniform velocity in a straight line is called inertia. Mass is a measure of the inertia of an object. The greater the mass of an object, the harder it is to move when it is at rest or difficult to stop when in motion. A common example where inertia can be observed is when you are on a bus. Initially, the bus is at rest. When it starts to move, your body has the tendency to move backward. On the other hand, when the bus suddenly stops, your body has the tendency to move forward. When the bus either starts to move or suddenly stops, your body has the tendency to change your state of motion. The second law of motion is the law of acceleration which states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and is inversely proportional to the object's mass. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the net force acting on the object. 
This can be expressed in equation form as acceleration is equals to net force over mass. This is often rearranged as net force is equals to mass times acceleration or mass is equals to net force over acceleration. Like any other quantity, force has a unit and is expressed in Newton. One Newton is defined as the amount of force required to give a 1 kilogram mass an acceleration of 1 meter per second per second, or 1 Newton is equals to 1 kilogram per meter second squared. Study and understand the following mathematical problems. Sample problem 1. A 1,000 kilogram truck is traveling at an acceleration of 4.5 meter per second squared east. Find the net force needed to accelerate the truck. First, we should identify the given. In this case, the acceleration of the truck is 4.5 meters per second squared. Its mass is 1,000 kilograms. Second, we identify an unknown quantity. The unknown in this problem is net force. Now, what equation should we use to find the net force? We use net force, which is equal to mass times acceleration. Now we are ready to solve the problem. Substitute, then solve the problem. The net force is equal to 4,500 newton due east. Sample problem 2. Suppose a ball of mass 0.60 kilogram is hit with a force of 12 newton. What is the acceleration of the ball? Its acceleration will be 20 meter per second squared. Sample problem 3. A box is pushed with an applied force of 20 newton parallel to the floor. It accelerated at 1.5 meter per second squared to the right. Neglecting friction, what is the mass of the box? The mass of the box will be 13.3 kilogram. The third law of motion is the law of interaction which states that for every action, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. This law tells us that a force exerted on any object is always exerted back by an equal magnitude of force but in opposite direction. Always remember that in this law, forces always come in pairs. These are called action and reaction forces, and they do not act on the same body. In determining the action and reaction forces, be able to identify first the action that requires force, and then identify the reaction force that counteracts the action force. An example of this is a boy pushing a wall. When the boy pushes the wall, action, the wall exerts an equal and opposite magnitude of force to the boy, reaction. Another example is a horse pulling a calessa, action. The calessa pulls an equal and opposite magnitude of force towards the horse, reaction. Some more examples include hammering a nail and pushing a grocery cart. In one of Galileo's experiments, objects dropped near the surface of the earth would fall with the same acceleration if air resistance is neglected. This acceleration is denoted by g with an approximate value of 9.8 meter per second square, or 980 centimeter per second square, or 32 feet per second square. The force that causes this acceleration is called the force of gravity or gravitational force. The force acts vertically downward toward the center of the Earth. The gravitational force on an object, Fg, can be expressed as Fg is equals to mg, where Fg is for gravitational force, m for mass and g for acceleration due to gravity. The direction of this force is always down toward the center of the Earth. The magnitude of the force of gravity on an object, mg, is called the object's weight, symbolized by the letter w. When a person's mass is 40 kg, the computed weight is 392 newton on Earth. His weight differs when he is on other planets and satellites like the Moon. Newton's laws of motion are extremely important because they apply to almost everything we see in everyday life. These principles explain why things move and stay stationary, such as why you don't float out of bed or hit your head on the floor when you're at home. Newton's laws of motion govern the movement of cars, water, buildings, and nearly everything else in our environment.